AP CRAM Calculus AB Free Response Exam Review Question 49 Critical Point Maximum and Integration On a certain workday, the rate in tons per hour at which unprocessed gravel arrives at a gravel processing plant is modeled by G of T is equivalent to 90 plus 45 the cosine of t squared over 18, where t is measured in hours, and t is either um, greater than or equivalent to zero hours, or less than or equivalent to eight hours. Note this is a closed interval that includes the endpoints eight and zero hours. At the beginning of the workday, where of course t is equivalent to zero, the plant has 500 tons of unprocessed gravel. During the hours of operation, between zero and eight hours, the plant processes gravel at a constant rate of 100 tons per hour. Okay, the question that we have to answer is, what is the maximum amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant during the hours of operation on this workday? And we have to justify our answer. All right, so um, solving this, does involve a few sequential steps and a little bit of insightful thinking, but it's not that difficult. All right, so I'll give you a moment to formulate your thoughts. Press pause if you need to. Okay, so basically, we model the amount of process on process function with this interval. And the rationale for this is that we're told that um, the plant has 500 tons of unprocessed gravel at the beginning of the day, so at t equals zero. So then we start our, in, um, our accumulation of gravel, the integral from zero to t, because we don't know where that t uh, reaches the maximum. That's what we kind of sort of had to figure it out. And we take the interval of g of s, the amount of gravel arriving, minus 100, the rate at which the gravel is processed. So we do our input minus our output, okay? And that's going to give us our accumulation. All right? All right, so we want to figure out basically where this integral reaches a maximum, but we know maximums are always reached at critical points. So what we can go ahead and do is basically take the derivative of this integral. And the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that if we take the derivative of an integral, we just basically um, get the integrand inside so the integrand of a differentiated integral represents, you know, our um, antiderivative. So basically, we need to figure out where this thing is equivalent to zero because there will occur a critical point that could ultimately be a maximum, okay? So, okay, zero equals g of t minus 100. So basically, g of t is equivalent to 90 plus 45, the cosine of t squared over 18 um, minus 100. But if we carry over 100 to the left-hand side, we add 100 to both sides, we basically set 100 equivalent to g of t, all right? Now, when um, we simplify by subtracting 90 on both sides, and what we can do next is divide both sides by 45 to get 2 over 9, and then take the inverse cosine of both sides and the square, um, okay, multiply by 18, and then take the square root. I know I'm kind of speaking and jumbling a whole bunch of steps together just for time's sake, okay? And when you do all that, when you divide by 45, take the inverse cosine, multiply by 18 on both sides, and then take the square root, you get that t is equivalent to 4.923, almost 5 seconds, okay? So at t equals 4.923, we potentially have a maximum 
or a minimum because remember critical points can be points of maximums or minimums. But let's just go ahead and test out our answer to see what it yields. So we set up a little table. We know that um, our A of T, our accumulation function at zero times zero, we get that um, our accumulation is 500. Nothing has come in or gone out yet. Then when we plot, when we integrate this at 4.923 for eight seconds, we get six approximately 635 tons um, of accumulation. Okay, and I recommend doing this integral in your calculator because. In the previous set of cards in this series, we um, integrated G of S, and if you don't do it on your handy-dandy calculator, you're going to have to use the Fresnel function um, to analyze the integral, and that gets really, really involved beyond my scope of, um, you know, expertise. So definitely use your calculator, which is what the AP examiners intends for you to do. And if you have this problem in an in-class exam, I'm sure you'll be able to use your calculator on it. So that's what you need to do, okay? So then if you analyze this in your calculator at t equals 8, you get 525, a little bit more than 525 tons. So definitely we can see that this is a local maximum. And therefore, we can go ahead and say that the maximum cut off a little there. Um, what the maximum accumulation occurs at t equals um, four point nine two three four eight seconds, but that's not our answer. The maximum amount, our accumulated amount, is going to be six hundred thirty-five point three seven six one two three tons. Okay. So watch this several times. I'll have several um, more solutions like this. And it really, you can read as much as you want, but it just takes doing these types of thinking problems over and over again to really become, you know, snazzy and have like a savvy way of solving it. And this is the best part of calculus because it shows you a real life application for integration in a production plant. Okay. All right.